Hello, let's do some math for fun. Here's a classic Poon and Victim question for you guys. We are going to find the minimum value of the absolute value of all the trig functions inside. Notice that they are just the regular trig functions. Please do not tell me to put in the inverse trig functions, right? Don't do that. <laughs> anyway, I would not recommend you guys to differentiate this and find the critical numbers right away. Uh, because we have six things, so that's not a good idea, huh? But anyway, how would you do it? Please pause the video and try it first. And this is Ninja Milk from Ryan Higa. Good stuff here though. All right, so here we go. Well, when we have sine x plus cosine x, the truth is we can actually combine them into just a sine function or a cosine function, and you can use the harmonic addition theorem for that, but I would like to present you guys the proof as well. So here we go. Let me just do it this way. Let me just say sine x plus cosine x. Let's say I want to combine them into just a sine function. In that case, what you will get is, first, a coefficient, that's say a capital A, and then you have the sine, that's good. And first, the x will stay the same, but you have to add another angle to that. So I'll just say the angle is phi, phi or phi, or I don't know, phi, I think. Well, Again, you can just apply the formula right away, but this is pretty much how the proof will go. What you do first is, just look at this. And we have two things inside adding, so we can just use the angle sum formula for sine. So that means we will just get a, so this is equal to a, times, again, the, by the formula, we get sine of the first, which is sine a, times cosine of the second, which is phi, and then we add we have a times the second part, so we still have the a. And then sine phi, so sine of the second, times cosine of the first, like this. All right, that's what we have. Now, keep this in mind. We are trying to find out a and phi. This part has the a and cosine phi. They are just the unknown numbers. Sine x is right here. Well. If you look back here, the coefficient of sine x is just 1. So what that means is that we must have 1 being equal to a times cosine phi. So again, you're just treating the sine x, sine x, and you match the coefficients. So from here, we can say a cosine phi is equal to 1, right? And similarly, the coefficient in front of the cosine here is just 1, right, cosine x is just 1, and then here we have a sine phi. So in another word, a sine phi has to be equal to 1, like that, which is great. And we can just solve for this system of equations, and perhaps we can just divide, divide, because that way the a will cancel out, and then cosine over sine is cotangent phi, cotangent phi, and 1 divided by 1, which is 1. And you just need to give an angle right here that will make this work. This is the same as saying 1 over tangent phi is equal to 1. Well, solve that, you get phi equals pi over 4. And again, you just need to provide one angle because that's all we need, seriously. And now we have to figure out what a is, and to do that, we can just put down the pi over 4 into one of the equations. Now say the second one because we're using sine all the way today. So, a times sine of pi over 4 this right here has to be equal to 1. And sine of pi over 4 is 1 over square root of 2. And we are all adults now, we do not have to rationalize the denominator. But we do have to multiply the square root of 2 on both sides. In another word, a is equal to square root of 2. Now, we can feel much better about this expression. <laughs> but I will still write this down for you guys right here. So suppose we just focus on the sine x plus cosine x right here. Based on what we did, we can write that as square root of 2, and that's actually the new amplitude, right? Because when you add the sine x and also the cosine x wave, it's actually slightly higher. But anyway, square root of 2 times sine, and then you have the x plus the phi, which is pi over 4, like so. Great. Now, let's try to do it with the other ones, and this is how you pair things up. Let's do it with tangent and cotangent, right? So let's see 
here we have the tangent x and we are going to add no no not tangent x plus tangent x tangent x plus cotangent x what's tangent x that's sine x over cosine x what's cotangent that's cosine x over sine x so good stuff because we can just combine the fractions and hopefully this can help us out a little bit more well multiply sine x sine x here multiply cosine x cosine x here we will see that this is equal to on the top we get sine square x and then plus cosine square x which is very nice divided by this and that which is let me put on the sine x first cosine x but as we all know the top is just nicely equal to one the bottom man this is sine x times cosine x. It seems that we have to do more work on this, huh? Because this is sine x plus cosine x. All right, let's see what we can do. Perhaps let's do this. Well, I'm not going to just write down this expression like, you know, 10 times later. So let's do this. Let me call this right here to be k. So I'll just say this expression to be k. So I'll just say note square root of 2 sine of x plus pi over 4 let's call this to be k so number k right well here we can just say sine x plus cosine x this right here will just be equal to k then of course and one of the best part about to get the sine x times cosine x is that we can just look at this and then square both sides and when we do that, right here you will see we get sine square x, and then we add the second term, square, right? But don't forget we still have to do the plus 2 times this and that, which is 2 sine x, cosine x, and this is nicely equal to k squared. Very good stuff. And this right here is just equal to 1. But I want to figure out what this is. So let's do this in our head. This is 1, put that to the other side and then divide the two on both sides. So we see sine x times cosine x is nicely equal to k squared minus one and then divided by two like that. All right, so that's pretty good. So now, because this we know is equal to one and this right here, it's equal to k squared minus one over two. So let me just write this down k squared minus 1 over 2. So what can we do? Well, pretty much we just have to do the reciprocal. Namely, we end up with 2 over k squared minus 1. Very good stuff. All right. So now, um, let's see, let's see, let's see. We still have to handle the cosecant plus cotangent. So, no, cosecant plus secant. So let me just put a cosecant x plus cosecant x plus secant x well let's just do this this is going to be 1 over sine x plus 1 over cosine x get the common denominator and all that stuff this is equal to cosine x plus sine x on the top so that's good over this times that which is sine x plus sorry sine x times cosine x all right, so pretty good stuff. And what's so good about this is that the top, this right here, is nicely equal to our k. So I will actually just write this down right here. This is equal to our k. Let me actually do this. This is equal to our k. And this is equal to our k squared minus 1 divided by 2. And again, do the reciprocal, so put a 2 on the top, we get 2k over k squared minus 1, like that. Right, excellent. And let me just erase this part, and I will say this is equal to the k that we have. Great. Okay, now, we just have to write the expressions inside in terms of k, and then we can just find the minimal value uh, for that expression. So, here we go. Alright, thanks for the case, seriously, that we can reduce this tremendously, alright? 
All right, here this expression is equal to the absolute value. This and that is just nicely equal to our k. And this and that, which is just equal to that, which is plus 2 over k squared minus 1. And lastly, we have that, which is for this and that. So we just need to add 2k over k squared minus 1, like this. So this is a pretty good question to just like, you know, test you on your trick identities. And uh, it's a classic Puna exam question. So I think the testing style back in the days compared to nowadays are very different. So yeah, but this is totally doable um, in terms of like, if you know enough identities and all that stuff, it's a very good practice. And also some calculus, we'll still do some calculus right here, all right? Okay, so how do we do that? Perhaps let's just add this on the top. So you see, if we add this on the top, this becomes absolute value of k plus, this is just two times the parentheses, k plus one, so I'll just do that. Over, I can factor the bottom, which is k minus one, k plus one. And it's pretty good that they cancel. So we are just trying to get the minimum of k plus 2 over k minus 1, like this. Now you have your choice. Either you can just use the calculus right now, or you can also use the AMGM formula. But I like to use calculus, so let me just do this with calculus for you guys. So I'll just call this to be f of k, and do our derivative. And the truth is, this right here, is actually never zero. Why? You can just try to solve for zero. If you have k plus 2 over k minus 1, that's equal to zero. Bring that to the other side, and then you can just solve this equation. Seriously, it's just never equal to zero. Just a little algebra. You can end up with the quadratic equation. That's never equal to zero. And the reason I want to say that, it's because if you have the expression inside of the absolute value, if it's zero, you may get the corner like this. And you will have to consider these two as your critical numbers as well. But since this is never equal to zero, so we don't have to worry about that. All right, so what we can do is actually just focus on the inside. I will actually just focus on the inside here, so I'll just differentiate. Without the absolute value, just focus on the inside, right? So you get 1, and differentiating this, you get negative, because you can bring this to the top and make that into a negative 1 power. You get negative, and then you have 2 over k minus 1, but you will have to square that. Right, so just the first derivative. And then we are going to set this to be 0, and then just solve this real quick. Bring this to the other side, so we have, let me see, 1 equals 2 over k minus 1 square, bring that, so it's k minus 1 square is equal to 2, so that means k minus 1 is equal to plus or minus square root of 2, and that means k is equal to plus or minus square root of 2 plus 1. So here we have our critical numbers. We have two of them. And now we just have to find out which one will give you a bigger value, which one will give you a smaller value. The smaller value is the one that we are looking for, and that's pretty much it. So here, let's do f of the first k value. Let's do the positive square root of 2 plus 1. Plug in, we get the absolute value of square root of 2 plus 1, and then plus 2 over square root of 2 plus 1, and then minus 1, like so. Now, 1 minus 1. 0, right? And then 2 over square root of 2 is square root of 2. Plus another square root of 2, that's 2 square root of 2. And then you add 1 to it. That number is positive, so the absolute value doesn't matter. All in all, we get 2 square root of 2 plus 1, like that. Okay, now let's do another one. f of negative square root of 2 plus 1. Well, same thing negative square root of 2 plus 1 plus 2 over negative square root of 2 and then we have the 
plus 1, and then the minus 1, like all this. Alright, they cancel. This becomes negative 2 square root of 2, right? And then combined with that, we have negative 2 square root of 2, and then the plus 1 after that. Now, be really careful with this right here. This is definitely bigger than 1. So, we still have to do the absolute value. Yeah, you can just say this right here is the answer for that, but this right here is actually a negative value instead of the absolute value. So if you don't want to have the absolute value in your final answer, you can just say this being equal to 2 square root of 2 minus 1, like that. Why? Because you have to remember the absolute value of x. This right here is equal to either x or negative x. It's the same thing if x is greater than 0, well, equal to 0. This right here, you apply the negative if the input is less than 0. Because the inside is less than 0, so I pretty much take out the absolute value and multiply it by negative. This and that, which one is bigger? Of course, this right here is bigger. I mean, sorry. Which one is bigger? That one is bigger, so that's one small, of course. Anyway, which one is the answer? This right here is the answer. This right here is the minimum. It's, in fact, it's the absolute minimum. 2 square root of 2 minus 1 right here. Yeah, hopefully you guys all like this, and thank you guys so much for coming. Cheers. And as always, and as always, that's it. Yeah.